guys, welcome back to my channel. Now today I am trying out something for the first time. I'm going to be creating an extra tall cake. So you can see I've got two six inch cakes here that are already crumb coated, but I'm going to put them together and make an extremely tall, narrow cake. Now, the thing with extra tall cakes is that they need to be built up properly on the inside. You can't just stack tons and tons of layers. So, like I said, I've prepared two crumb coated cakes that have been chilling for a while. So I'm going to show you how to stack the two cakes together to make it one long cake. And then on the outside, I thought of doing a nice ombre sunset sort of effect with the buttercream. So I'm actually using a lower turntable than usual because I know I'm gonna be working at a higher height. But like I said, the most important thing about a tool cake is to build it up properly on the inside. So it's similar to a tiered cakes. Now, if you've seen my other videos where I show you how to stack multiple tiers, it's very similar, only they're not different sizes. So what you'll need is a cake board that is the same size, or if anything, a little bit smaller than your bottom part of the cake. So in my case, it's six inches, and because I wanted it slightly smaller than the cake, because I don't want to see any card on the outside, I actually cut around the cake board just to reduce the size very slightly. So before I put the cake board on, I'm going to put some straws inside. So I'm using some paper straws and I find that these are perfectly strong enough to hold a cake. So I'm going to insert them straight into the sponge. So I've done four straws so I can balance out the pressure from the top cake evenly. I think three will be plenty, but I just wanted to make sure. And now like usual, I'm going to trim them to the same size as the cake just using some scissors. And neaten up that buttercream on the top. And now it's time to attach the smaller cake board. So I'm going to apply a little bit of buttercream on top of the cake, so there's something for the cake board to stick to. So I've got a nice layer on there, and now I can put the cake board on. Press it down, and make sure it's also centered in the cake too. So now it's time to put on the other cake. Now I have decorated this and I've put it on a larger cake board like I usually would, purely because it's just that little bit easier to decorate. So what I'm actually going to do now is turn it this way round. So the flattest side of the cake is on the top because if I can get a flatter top, then I might as well take advantage of it. So once again, I'll need a little bit of buttercream here and then I'm going to turn the cake on top and place it on the cake board. And it's obvious to see what we're doing is if I just put the cake without this cake board, that bottom layer of cake has a lot of cake and buttercream to support. So this extra cake board layer is just giving that extra strength because it's gonna be an extra tall cake. Now, this isn't as scary as it looks because this cake is really cold. So if I just flip it like this, carefully place it on and line it up, with the other cake, that looks good. And then carefully remove this top cake card, which might be a little bit tricky because I did have this one in the freezer. Oh no, that came off pretty nicely. And I can now even out the top with a little bit of buttercream and even out the seal. So I'm kind of giving this cake an extra crumb coat because I want to close off this seal where the two cakes meet. So, a little bit of buttercream on the top. Wow, you can really feel that there's a lot more cake than usual. It's a lot heavier to spin. And I don't need to go over the whole cake. I'll just go over that seam and pack that in. So I've got a nice even crumb coating before I go on with the second layer. Now, of course, it helps having an extra tall scraper for this, even though, oh, it is as tall as the cake. I actually thought that this scraper was gonna be a lot shorter. Um, amazing, so good to know. The extra tall scraper is as tall as the cake. And so I can scrape as usual and just make the buttercream even out. And I'm gonna clean off the top corners as usual. Wow. That is an insanely tall 
cake. I'm actually really excited to see the finished product because especially with this ombre effect, I think it's gonna be really effective because of the height of the cake. You'll see the different buttercream and how it transforms. Oh, I'm very excited about this. Um, but you're probably thinking how to fit this in your fridge or freezer because obviously it's a lot taller than other cakes are. Most fridges and freezers, you can actually remove the shelves or drawers. Now, you can put this in the freezer. It's only gonna be in there for about 10 minutes to firm up this buttercream. So if you do end up taking out a drawer, as long as you're not in, let's say, 40 degree heat, um, the drawer should be fine just sitting on the side for about 10 minutes to firm this buttercream up. Alternatively, you can put it in your fridge and remove one of the shelves. Anyway, so I'm gonna leave this in the freezer because I do have space for this to firm up before I go on with a second layer of buttercream. Now, carrying it might be a different story, so I might actually leave it on the turntable for this. So while the cake is setting in the freezer, I thought to prepare my buttercream. So what I've got is three separate bowls, but I've only got two colors. So I've got a fuchsia pink and a yellow. And what I'm going to do is create one pink and one more orangey color, and then combine the two. So there's more of a gradual difference from the bottom of the cake to the top. I'm sure it will make more sense as I'm doing it. So I'm gonna start off by coloring my Swiss meringue buttercream but I'm actually going to leave quite a lot of it white because I want most of the top of the cake white anyway. So I'm going to start off with a little bit of the fuchsia color and I'm going to mix that together. Yeah, that's a really nice rich color. And now I'm going to add the yellow. So I've only got lemon yellow, which is slightly cooler than an egg yellow, for example. So I've got a little trick to just change the tone slightly. I'll start off with the yellow and I'll show you what I mean by the different tone. So that's the lemon yellow and when I put it together with the pink, it doesn't scream out sunset. So I'm actually going to add a little bit of this pink into the yellow, mix it together and look what happens. It kind of gives more of an orangey tint, so that's exactly what I wanted to achieve. And to me, that's definitely more sunset-esque. But what I might do is actually strengthen the pink a little bit more before I combine the two colors. And strengthen the yellow as well. And I've put a little bit more pink in there because I want it more orange. That's more like it. So. It's more of an orange tone and goes a lot better with the pink buttercream. So now what I'm going to do is mix a small amount of the more orange buttercream with the pink because I do want an in-between color when I'm blending them. And I'm also going to add a little bit of white. There, so it's kind of like this salmon-y pink. So I've got the orange, this in-between color, and the pink. And with the white, because it was freshly made buttercream, there has got quite a lot of air bubbles, so I'm going to give it a good mix with my spatula without adding any color. And this just knocks out those air bubbles and gets a good arm workout too. So the colors are ready for the cake, so I'm going to check on it, and if it's firm enough, we'll take it out the freezer. Okay, so that layer of extra buttercream has firmed up, so I'm gonna start putting on the colored buttercream. So I'm going to start with the darkest shade of pink and then work my way up with the orange and the in-between color until I get to the white. So what I'm gonna do is actually use my spatula because I don't want significant stripes on the cake. This is why I'm going to use my spatula so it's a little bit less accurate. Now well, doing this is actually a bit more difficult because there's more cake that will get in the way. But as usual, I'm going to go on with about half a centimeter and spread on this pink buttercream nice and evenly. And then I'm gonna go with this in-between color that I created to add a more gentle transformation from the pink to the orange. And this color has a really nice tone to it because it's mixed between the pink and the yellow. It will match the tones of the cake extremely well. And that's what you want when it comes to coloring buttercream and using different colors on a cake. 
And then where these two colours meet already, I'm going to almost blend in the layers. So I don't get a streak of where they meet, it's more gradual. So I'm really rubbing with the back of my spatula, kind of in a circular motion, almost blending paints together. Now I can go on with my orangey yellow. And it doesn't matter if you get like bits of pink in the different areas. I think it just adds to the more gradual ombre effect. So you can also see that because I'm applying with my palette knife and not a piping bag, I'm getting more of a rough finish to each layer of colour. But again, it adds to like the random gradual blends of the colour. If you do it with a piping bag, you might get stripes. That's what I want to avoid. But I'm going to do the same here and blend this orange into the colour underneath. And then I'm going to finish with my white. Now because I know there's going to be white on top, what I'm going to do is put some white buttercream on the top of the cake, work on the top of the cake and then bring it down the sides and finish off the sides like that. So as usual I'm rotating the cake and evening the buttercream out with my palette knife and pushing that buttercream over the sides to really pack in those corners. And now I'll finish off the sides of the cake with the white buttercream. So I'm kind of bringing down the buttercream from the top, but also adding on the sides too. And just before I scrape, I'm going to blend the orange layer into the white. And I really don't mind going a little bit crazy here because I really want that gradual blend. So do it a lot more than you think. And it usually scares me at this stage as well, but the more blended, the better. And before I scrape, I'm just going to pack out those corners once again from the top. And I'm just going to use the edge of the scraper to get that nice sharp finish on the very top of the cake too. And now it's time to scrape. So as usual, I'm going to place my scraper against the cake and start turning. And the scraper will start smoothing out the buttercream. And hopefully this ombre effect will become more visible. The only problem with ombre is that if you need to fill in any holes or places on the buttercream, you kind of have to use the scrapings rather than your bowls because it's created its own colours. So I'll go around a few times and try and fill the holes just by scraping, but I do have a build up on my scraper so I can use that. So I've scraped around quite a few times and I do have holes. So I'm going to use the colours that are on my scraper and fill in using these. So for example, at the very bottom, I'll use this bit of pink and then kind of work my way up. And this is kind of where you'll get this really random blend of colours going on, which totally adds to the effect. Now I'm entering like this orangey stage and then the lighter orange, which actually blended quite well, so I think I'll just focus on where it meets the white. Clean the scraper and go round once again. It's a lot easier than I thought to actually maintain the straightness of the scraper because I think there's so much cake to lean on, it actually makes it a little bit easier. Wow, I think I'm in love. <laughs> just gonna do one more check to see if any holes need filling in before I scrape this excess off. It looks like I'm fine. Just need to go and touch up the last few bits. So a slower scrape around. And now you can really see this beautiful blend of colours too. So blending those layers of colour really helped. Okay, I'm not going to touch it anymore. The buttercream is really smooth and I feel like if I touch it more, it's going to get ruined. Um, of course, the last bit is the top corners, but I'm going to add a white chocolate drip to this. So I'm going to be putting this in the freezer again, so I might as well trim off the corners and get them really nice and sharp at the same time. So once again, this is going to go in the freezer, so the drawers are going to come out for another 10 minutes, get this super cold, and in the meantime, I'm going to prepare my white chocolate drips. Okay, so the buttercream has hardened, so I'm going to quickly trim off the extra buttercream with a sharp knife and I'll get some nice sharp corners. It's 
So that buttercream has cut off really evenly. So what I've got here is some of my white chocolate ganache that I use for dripping. Now, I think the drips are gonna look amazing because of the height of the cake. And so I'm willing to do it freehand um, with my palette knife. But of course, if you want them more controlled, then I suggest using a piping bag. I have a tutorial all about white chocolate drips. So if you want to have a look there, I'll put the link up here. So I've kind of chosen my front, which is facing the camera. And then I'm gonna pour a small amount of the white chocolate ganache and then carefully guide it down the cake. Let the drips form on their own. And of course, if you're doing white chocolate drips, the cake needs to be extremely cold. So the longer drips look amazing because there's still a long way to go from the height of the cake. Now, depending on how the drips are behaving, depends on whether you put it back in the freezer or the fridge, but it looks like my drips are setting quite well because the cake was extremely cold. So I'm going to leave it out for a few minutes for it to set before I finish off with the decoration. So now the drips have set, I can start finishing off the cake. So what I've got here is all that leftover buttercream from all the different tones of the pinks and the oranges, all in one piping bag. And I'm gonna do a few piping details like I usually do, but because it's got the mix of colors in there, it's gonna look really nice and tie everything together. So I'm gonna do a mixture of mini rosettes and stars on top of where the ganache was poured on. So I not only cover that, but I'm adding the decoration in that area. And a few coming down the front as well. And then I've got a mixture of some fresh strawberries just to put a little bit of freshness on it, as well as my white chocolate ruffles and some dried lemon peel as well. I really like this contrast of the red of the strawberries on there. I think I'll do a few at the bottom as well. And then I'll go on with my chocolate ruffles. And these are definitely one of my favorite decorations. And then some of the lemon peel, just to give it that summery finish. And then just one last small detail, which I haven't done in a while, some edible gold leaf, because this really is quite a special cake. And I think I'm done. Um, and I've got to say, I think I'm in love with this cake as well. I am so happy with the way it's turned out. I love the proportion and I'm really surprised with how easy it was to maintain the straightness of the cake too. I think it helps having a tall scraper and space in the freezer. And I think I want to make all my cakes this tall from now on. Um, give it a go. It's not as scary as it looks. And of course you can do any design, but this just came to mind when I thought of doing an extra tall cake. If you try it out, please tag me at George's Cakes on Instagram. I love seeing your creations. They really make my day. And in the meantime, if you've got any more suggestions of tutorials or techniques that you want to see, then comment below. Be sure to check out all my other tutorials and recipes on my channel, and we'll see you very soon.